Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Sunday, everybody. This is a special extra episode of China Update. There were too many developments this week to cover in just six episodes, so this is an extra one here on Sunday. Today's video will be looking at developments specifically this week related to Taiwan, Taiwan Strait relations and tensions, and U.S.-China relations as they relate to Taiwan policy. Let's begin. Beijing continues to ratchet up the military pressure this week in the lead up to Taiwan's January elections, one which could result in William Lai's victory, a DPP leader whom Beijing has labelled as a separatist. On Thursday of this week, Taipei again reported PLA warships and warplanes, including aircraft, crossing the sensitive median line of the Taiwan Strait. From the morning, the defense ministry in Taipei said it had detected J-10 and J-16 fighters, as well as ship-borne helicopters operating off central Taiwan and to the southwest of the island. Eleven of those aircraft crossed the Taiwan Strait's medium line. The ministry added that it had sent its own forces to monitor the operations. This was the fourth major large-scale sortie into Taiwan airspace in November. Despite this military pressure, Taipei doesn't appear too concerned. On Wednesday, at the New York Times Deal Book Summit, President Tsai Ing-wen said that China is too consumed by domestic economic and political problems to invade Taiwan, expressing, quote, "The Chinese leadership at this juncture is overwhelmed by its internal challenges. My thought is that perhaps this is not a time for them to consider a major invasion of Taiwan." End quote. Nevertheless, it's still a dangerous time, as she added that Taiwan faces quote mounting military intimidation, grey zone campaigns, cyber attacks, and information manipulation. End quote. Tsai said that her government was watching the war in Ukraine closely. She thanked Washington for its support of Taipei. And warned Western businesses about growing risks in the mainland, expressing quote doing business in China is riskier than before. And Western companies may want to look at alternatives or additional bases in the region, and we welcome them to forge a deeper connection with Taiwan. End quote. Meanwhile, on the other side of the strait, on Thursday, Beijing hit out at Washington and Taipei, demanding that the U.S. stop interfering in both Taiwan and South China Sea affairs, saying U.S. arms sales to Taiwan are making the situation more dangerous. At a press event, a PRC defense spokesperson said that Tsai Ing-wen's DPP is quote turning Taiwan into a weapons depot and a power keg. Taiwan's security depends on the peaceful development of cross-strait relations instead of a few pieces of U.S.-made weapons. End quote. Adding quote, we request that the U.S. side acts in accordance with its words and takes concrete steps to honor its commitment not to support Taiwan independence. Stop arming Taiwan and stop undermining China's core interest. End quote. While the United States doesn't officially recognize Taipei, a decades-long political compromise to ensure a peaceful Taiwan Strait status quo and normalize relations with Beijing, however, it does have robust unofficial ties to the island and legal obligations to ensure it can protect itself. As a thriving liberal democracy, Taiwan has long enjoyed strong support from Congress. Indeed, some American lawmakers now are calling for stepped-up support. More critically, however, Taiwan represents a crucial piece in U.S. grand strategy in the region. A U.S.-aligned Taiwan ensures that China is kept bottled up within the first island chain, facing a line of U.S. allies from Japan down to the Philippines. If Taiwan was incorporated into the People's Republic of China, forcefully or otherwise, such a move would greatly undermine confidence in U.S. strength in the region, devastating Washington's alliance system, and would also mean that China could project naval power deep into the Pacific Ocean in a way not seen from an Asian power since the Empire of Japan and the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Taiwan is thus the spearhead of U.S. containment policy in the region. But even if Washington wished to abandon this policy, Taiwan still remains a dangerous flashpoint, 
Without U.S. deterrence, an attempted invasion of the island from Beijing could trigger a war in one of the most economically important regions in the world, devastating the global economy, supply chains, and shipping, and likely sucking in regional actors like the world's number three economy, Japan. It is in the interests of many that a peaceful status quo is maintained. For Beijing, unification, or reunification as nationalist mainlanders would call it, is a matter of national prestige, party legitimacy, and strategic importance. Returning to the PRC defense spokesperson's Thursday statements, though, he also took the opportunity to criticize the U.S. for supporting the Philippines in the latter's territorial disputes with China in the South China Sea perhaps the second most dangerous flashpoint in the region, expressing, quote, The U.S. has meddled in the South China Sea issue for its self-interests and instigated and supported the Philippines to infringe on China's rights and stir up trouble. End quote. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying today's episode of China Update. I have a huge favor to ask. If you like this channel, if you like China Update and you'd like to see it grow, if you'd like to help me grow the channel and put more resources into the channel, one of the best ways you can do that just takes a couple of clicks, hitting the subscribe button and hitting the like button. And for anyone who wants to help keep the channel financially sustainable, keep the channel primarily subscriber supported so it does not have to rely on corporate sponsorships, Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are in the description below. It's just me making these videos six days a week, but with your support, it remains a tremendous pleasure and honor to be able to do it. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, in the United States, according to the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute Reagan National Defense Survey, published this week, nearly three quarters of Americans now support the U.S. recognizing Taiwan as an independent country, while a majority supported U.S. defense assistance to Taiwan. The survey was conducted from October the 27th through November the 5th, garnishing responses from over 2,500 adults in the U.S. via telephone and the internet. The survey found that and we're now quoting it directly. Almost three quarters of Americans, 73%, are concerned about a potential invasion of Taiwan, and super majorities in both parties, 68% of Democrats and Republicans alike, view Taiwan as an ally. About seven in 10 Americans, 71%, are concerned about the Russian invasion of Ukraine inspiring other authoritarian countries to invade their democratic neighbors. An increasing percentage of Americans are expressing support for sending U.S. troops to defend Taiwan if invaded. 46% in 2023, up each year from 39% in 2019. After learning more about Taiwan's democracy and its strategic importance, 52% say they are more likely to support committing U.S. forces to Taiwan's defense. In order to keep the peace and deter a Chinese invasion, 6 in 10 Americans, 60%, support increasing the U.S. military presence near Taiwan, and nearly as many support increasing U.S. arms sales to Taiwan, 55%. And finally, for today's Taiwan Focus video, we examine a long foreign affairs article published over the weekend called Taiwan and the True Sources of Deterrence. The piece is written by three highly influential figures in the space. Bonnie S. Glasser is Managing Director of the Indo-Pacific Program at the German Marshall Fund of the United States. Jessica Chan Weiss is the Michael J. Zak Professor for China and Asia Pacific Studies at Cornell University, a senior fellow at the Asia Society Policy Institute Center for China Analysis, and a former member of the U.S. State Department's policy planning staff. And Thomas J. Christensen is James T. Shotwell Professor of International Relations at Columbia University School of International and Public Affairs and a senior advisor at the U.S. State Department's China Coordination Office. This is a very long piece, but it will have some influence on U.S. policy debate surrounding deterrence and Taiwan. And so we will end today's video by quoting selected excerpts from the piece directly. The three parties involved in the Taiwan Strait are not providing one another with sufficient assurances. For example, to enhance deterrence, Washington must make clear that it opposes any unilateral change to the status quo, not only an attempt by Beijing to compel unification, but also a political move by Taipei to pursue independence. And as the United States works with Taiwan to strengthen its security, it must avoid giving the impression that it is moving toward restoring formal diplomatic relations or a defense alliance with the island. Combined with a conditional and credible threat of a military response by the United States and Taiwan to the use of force, 
Such assurances will help prevent a war. Ill-advised statements made in the past by former and current U.S. officials suggesting that the United States should formally recognize Taiwan as a sovereign state or restore a clear alliance commitment to defend the island would, if adopted, undercut assurances and weaken deterrence as surely as would a lack of military readiness. U.S. military threats will lose their potency if Chinese leaders believe that the United States will take advantage of their restraint to promote Taiwan's formal independence or to prevent unification under any circumstances, even if it were to result from peaceful, uncoerced negotiation. Beijing may determine that refraining from an attack would mean it would forever lose the possibility of unification or would allow the United States to restore something akin to a defense alliance with Taiwan. And if China comes to that conclusion, then Washington's focus on beefing up military power in the region may still fail to prevent a war. As the third party to this dispute, the United States must also think carefully about its mix of threats and assurances. Its priority is to prevent the Chinese military from attacking Taiwan. But deterrence will not work if Beijing does not believe US assurances. For instance, it is in the United States' interest for China to remain hopeful that sometime in the future it might be able to resolve its differences with Taiwan without resorting to violence. China would have to persuade Taiwan's public of the merits of some form of peaceful integration, a hard sell, but not impossible given China's economic clout and the possibility that a more attractive government may someday emerge in Beijing. To the extent that Washington can influence Chinese President Xi Jinping's thinking on this crucial issue, it should do so. The United States should avoid making statements or taking actions that could lead Beijing to conclude that unification can only be achieved through force. The U.S. government should provide a comprehensive and high-level statement laying out its One China policy and explaining why Taiwan matters to the United States in language that is comprehensible to the American people. Such a statement should include the insurance provided by prior administrations that the United States will accept any outcome reached peacefully by both sides, and that has the assent of the people of Taiwan. Just as the executive branch does not send the holders of the top four positions in the U.S. government to Taiwan, similarly, as a matter of policy, Congress should not send to Taiwan the President of the Senate or the Speaker of the House. There are sufficient informal channels for these officials to give and receive messages from Taiwan and to support Taiwan without providing a convenient occasion for Beijing to ratchet up military pressure while blaming Washington and Taipei for sparking tensions. Such expressions of U.S. support for Taiwan are counterproductive as they only make the island less secure. Some policymakers and analysts make the mistake of conflating assurances with appeasement or outright capitulation. This is wrong-headed. Alongside credible threats, credible assurances are an integral part of deterrence. Given the dramatic ongoing modernization of the Chinese military and China's increasing assertiveness, the United States needs to strengthen its military posture in East Asia and assist in improving Taiwan's defense capabilities and helping the island withstand a potential blockade. Many might argue that assurances would signal weakness and invite Chinese aggression. On the contrary, these assurances would help strengthen a deterrent strategy that includes reinforcing the U.S. military presence in East Asia and hardening Taiwan's defense. It is precisely because tough measures are needed that it is imperative that Washington and Taipei accompany them with productive diplomatic ones, assuring Beijing that it will not be punished if it foregoes the use of force. Okay. That is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Have a great Sunday, and I will see you all for a new week of updates tomorrow.